Olá, muito boa noite. Cá estamos de regresso para mais um episódio do The Special Marketing Live Show. Well, it kind of fits you, the, the name, marketing. You just keep the O away and it's the same. <laughs> Hoje temos aqui o Mark Gouver. How do you spell it, your name? It's it, uh, the, your, short, your family name. Uh, Guberti, so G-U-B-E-R-T-I. But it's Italian? Uh, Italian, yes. Oh, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> então, hoje temos aqui conosco o Marco Guberti. I, I will say in the, the Italian way, Guberti. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <You> know. <laughs> Para nos falar sobre empreendedorismo. Uh, o Marco, you, you don't, you're 19, right? Uh, 20 right now. Oh, 20, ok. Uh, you made it last April? Um, what do you mean by that? You're born in April, right? Uh, uh, January. Joe, so, okay. It's, 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 you're from the beginning of the year. I'm from September. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, então, hoje vamos falar de empreendedorismo. Olá, boa noite, Bruno. Bem-vindo. Hoje não vais poder fazer perguntas sobre a água de Monchique, mas podes fazer perguntas sobre empreendedorismo ao Mark, que é uma uma máquina de empreender. Tem vários livros publicados no Amazon, se vocês depois quiserem podem procurar, alguns deles eu já os comprei. Também tem vários cursos sobre a área do marketing digital, do empreendedorismo, publicado no Udemy, e por isso podem encontrar lá a informação sobre o marketing. Hoje, a transmissão nem vai ser em português, nem em espanhol, que é o habitual, vai ser em inglês, porque é a língua materna do Mark. Mark, do you speak Spanish or something? I know very little. I have a good job, but I don't know too much. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Next time, you have to speak in Portuguese. <laughs> you have to practice and speak in Portuguese. I, I used to make this, this joke to my invited, but they are Spanish. So, or Spanish speaking, it's more easier. <laughs> okay. Então, quem quiser, quem quiser colocar questões, eventualmente, se, espero que estejam à vontade com o inglês. Se quiserem colocar as questões em inglês, por favor, estejam à vontade. Se não, coloquem em português, eu faço questão de traduzir e coloco as questões ao marco, ok? Também, quem tiver uh, interesse em partilhar... Olá, Fernando, que tal? Quem tiver interesse pode partilhar este direto com os seus amigos, pode enviar por mensagem, pode convidá-los, deve andar por aí alguns um botão, Ok? Deixem sugestões também, coloquem dúvidas, deixem sugestões de temas que queiram ver abordados, convidados que queiram, ok? Para termos aqui em direto. Eu agora vou começar a falar em inglês, porque senão o Marco pode achar que pode sentir um pouco só e vou falar em inglês para se sentir um pouco mais à vontade. I will start speaking English so you may feel a little bit alone and awkward. So I guess it will be easier for you if I speak in English. So Mark, it's a pleasure to have you here. It's an honor. I've been, as I said before to you, it's, I've been following you for, I guess, four years at least. And I'm amazed about the things you are doing and the, all, all the job you have done since then. And it's a pleasure. It's, I've been wanting to invite you to, to come here a long time ago. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a pleasure to have you here. First, I may ask you to talk a little bit about you about what are you doing, where are you from, and so on. And then we'll start the, the conversation about entrepreneurship and content marketing, which are two things that I really like. <laughs> all right, so Beagle in Nueva York, that's all you're going to get from me. But I live in New York. Um, I'm a content marketer who uh, takes great joy in helping people grow their businesses. Uh, so I do this through a variety of books that I published, um, working on virtual summits, uh, doing a lot of things of that nature with the intent of um, people have their businesses, they have their messages, how can they uh, spread them and reach more people? That's where I come in through uh, my content, my podcast, Breakthrough Success, and some of the other things that I'm doing as well. Oh, great. So let's start by why did you start it? Because as I said to you before... <laughs> at the age you started you was supposed to be playing playstation or something <laughs> and yeah. you started to to building things right 
Why? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I mean, I just really enjoy it. Uh, I, I think it comes down to that. Like I enjoyed what I was doing and then that evolved into me taking it from a business standpoint. So I started writing a blog about the Boston Red Sox because that's my favorite team. And that evolved into me saying, wow, I see this blogging thing. Uh, people make revenue from this. They write about different things. So I wrote about different things. I had a bunch of blogs up and uh, then I realized, wow, why don't I just help people with their blog traffic? And uh, then I wrote a blog about that. That evolved into how do I help people scale their businesses with content marketing? And that's pretty much how I got to where I am now. But it just started with a blog about the Boston Red Sox. And I really had a lot of fun doing it. So um, that led to uh, what eventually happened. Great. So I guess you started by doing which yes. is an, an amazing myself. thing yeah. because I, I will tell you, I've been teaching and doing trainings and so on. And one of the biggest problems I found in my students, it's they just want to learn, but they don't want to put in practice what they learn. And I guess you make the things in the opposite ways. First, you start doing and improving and learning and doing and improving and learning, right? Yeah, I mean, also, like, I'm trying to make my content more actionable because I feel like uh, if you just listen to one of my podcast episodes or go through one of my virtual summits, that's not how you become successful. You become successful by picking an episode or summit session or piece of content that resonates with what you're doing, and then you actually take action on it. That's the big second part. So people wonder, I have all this knowledge. I know how to do it. Uh, why am I not getting the results even though I know how to do all this stuff? It's a lack of action. Okay, great. So tell me, first you started just writing about Red Sox, right? Yes. But then you, you, I think you start to think, maybe I can give some more traction to this. I can grow my, my audience and so on, right? Yes. And what did you do? <laughs> Did you went to read blogs about SEO, for instance, and, and that, that kind of things? That's exactly what I did. I read blog posts about all these different things. I must have read hundreds of blog posts about Twitter to come up with the current approach that I use for that platform. That's my strongest one right now. Um, but it, it was just reading a lot of blog posts. Now, some people, they watch videos, they tra uh, watch training courses, podcast episodes, and all those are great. It's just that for me reading blog posts is the best for me. You just got to figure out what is your best way of learning and then really commit to that. And also the doing part that I talked about earlier. Yeah, I guess, I guess the, the doing thing, it's the, 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 the yeah, the make your break. Yeah. So let me focus. Uh, okay. You started, you, st and then you, how much time did you take? So, you started doing by starting teaching or creating content you figure well, maybe that question i have some people may have it also so let me start telling how to do it um so when it came to like creating content and teaching i think i was uh i mean, I mean learning and teaching through creating the content i think for me it was um, I created the content while I was learning so I could reinforce some of the lessons that I was learning. I don't know what the stats on this are, but um, if you like read something, you have a certain percentage ability to remember it. But if you also write it down and try and teach someone else, it skyrockets. So I would say you teach yourself by creating the content as well. Yeah, because one of the, I, I, like you, I used to say to people, one of the biggest or the better way to to have customers and to have them close to you and all that kind of things, it's to create content. And people used to say, oh, I'm not good enough. Everybody's writing about this and so on. What do you have to tell to these people? <laughs> um, I mean, a lot of it comes down to your mindset. Um, I can see in the beginning not thinking you're good enough because you haven't done a lot yet and you see someone who's really successful and you don't know how to match that. I feel like a lot of people, they look at this big successful person 
maybe Gary Vaynerchuk, maybe a Grant Cardone. Those are two guys I definitely uh, look up to. But um, I feel like people look at these people and think they have to match them perfectly. And I feel like that's where they look at this big gap and they think, wow, who am I to really be communicating with this type of audience? So I think it just comes down to you putting in the initial work. If I mean, you have to prove it because um, like people say like, oh, I can't do this. Uh, who am I? But then they don't really even attempt uh, to see if they're right or wrong. And 99% of the time, they were actually very capable it's just a matter of writing that first blog post, hitting publish, and creating your own audience. I mean, you only need to have one person validate your idea to say, okay, this is heading in a good direction. So when you get that first positive comment for someone or someone says they really like your work, that's validation. When you see traffic, when you see a sale, that's validation. And uh, it really builds. I mean, like I don't have to see more sales and more traffic to – uh, feel validation in my sense, but I feel like when you are starting, it matters a lot more. So just to uh, briefly uh, recap, I would just say do the work, uh, put yourself out there and actually attempt to do the thing that you say, oh, who am I? Like, I'm not good at this. Actually attempt it in a very wholehearted way and uh, build an audience around that, even if it's just a few people. Yeah, because I guess one of the problems is that we look up to the sky and we as you said we look at Gary Vaynerchuk Grant Cardone and so on but we don't have to talk to them we have to talk to people who knows less than us and we have a lot of people knowing less than us <laughs> and that that's the point uh, for instance one thing I, I used to, to say is we are for instance one step behind th those people who may need or help so maybe the way we do it the approach we have it's more friendly more familiar to them because for instance gary vinerschuk well he's not bad telling the giving tips to to help us but some of them are talking about millions about lots of people lots of things that we can't afford because we are a little business we are a little store and we, we can make it or we are starting I guess when you are when you are uh, uh, just a little bit ahead from people, you may help them better, don't you think? Yeah, and I, I mean, I feel like um, I mean that's a really great point because uh, there are some people who they serve that person who's making millions of dollars. There are other people who their target audience, their avatar is that beginner who doesn't know exactly where to go yet is just looking to find some kind of grasp of where to go next. So there's a lot of different audiences out there. There's a lot of segments like beginner, intermediate, advanced. So it's getting clear on like what avatar you're targeting. Perfect. And another question, it's it's almost this it's it goes together with I I don't know a lot. I can't help anyone. The the another reason that goes together to does to not start it's well Lots of people are talking about this. What what can I do to make the difference? <laughs> what do you have to, to tell about it? I would say just start talking about it. And as you get better at talking about it, you're going to insert your personality in there. And that's where the true difference is made. I mean, like, we might even get to a point where you can automate the content creation. Like, there are tools like the early stages where you plug in a few words and out comes uh, – 500 word blog post. So uh, you might get to the point where you type in a few words pretty soon. You have an entire blog post with images and everything. So uh, especially with that possible trend happening, uh, it really your personality is the one thing that you cannot replace. So uh, I feel like if you insert more of your personality, people just people don't come to just like your content. They come to like you. They come to like everything that your brand stands for, and that's why people come back and like an experience on like Gary Vaynerchuk is different from an experience on Grant Cardone or some other entrepreneur. You see their personalities within their content and the people who you like their personalities, you tend to gravitate towards them. Yeah. That's, I used to give the, the example of the music, for instance, the standards, my way you have, I guess the biggest guy singing, it was Frank Sinatra. 
And you may think, well, how can I be like him? I can't. I won't think as well as he th th did. But you may think, I can make it different. And maybe some kind of public will like my version. And I guess it's the, the same thing we, we need to think about, about creating content and so on. So people may like the way you do it because the way you write, the way you talk, the way you put things, your personality, your your vo voice may be the difference you are looking for. Don't you think? Yeah, and I, I definitely agree with that. And I really like the fact that you brought up singers because, I mean, your favorite singer is probably the same person who a lot of people really don't like. And uh, so, I mean, it's their personality that grabs you, but it doesn't necessarily grab everyone. But that singer, whoever it is, is uh, that person is more focused on who they have versus uh, the people who you don't want to try and convert someone who doesn't necessarily like you or doesn't like what your brand stands for, your personality. It's better to convert people who are already converted. That's something Gary Vaynerchuk likes to say, but it really goes to show that your personality, it allows you to have people who really, really like you instead of someone who just comes across you, kind of likes what you say, but then doesn't remember you. Great. Another question I have to, to ask you. <laughs> How did you keep the focus? Because you are very young and you may have more, some, some voices calling you and so on. How did you keep focus? Um, I would say uh, the first part is like having that burning desire and knowing that you really want to do this because then like it becomes easier to do the rest. Uh, I would say though, I always had like three things that I have to do each day because there's so much opportunity out there that it can really drain someone. Uh, you have so many different ways to make money and then you try all those different things and you give up uh, if you don't see the quick return. So it's really playing that long game and that's the hard part. So I feel like uh, just really narrowing your focus on a few opportunities um, if you have any kind of revenue you can devote towards this delegate, that's one of the best things you can do to save a lot of time. Like my podcast, Breakthrough Success, we've done uh, over 250 episodes that are published, a few more that haven't been published yet. I have not edited any of those episodes. I have not written the show notes for any of those episodes. And think about if I had to write uh, the show notes and edit all those 250 episodes and even more of that just haven't been released yet, it'll be really hard for me to do some of the other things that I'm able to do, like host a virtual summit, write another book, and do some of the other things that I'm doing. Great. Well, let me talk about a little bit with, with the, the audience, so if they have any question. Não sei se tenho alguma questão, se quiserem colocar alguma questão. Agostinho, eu depois posso fazer uma tradução. Graças a Silice. Se, entretanto, alguém tiver por aí alguma questão para colocar ao Marco, por favor, esteja à vontade, que ele terá todo o gosto em responder, ok? Well, and then let's talk a little bit about money. I guess you didn't start it because of money, right? No, not at but, all. But I guess that in some point you realize, well, maybe I can make some money with this. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> for instance, when do you... Where did you start it? Courses, books? I started creating blogs and um, I know I mentioned that a little earlier, but there's a site called Squidoo. It's, uh, it, it was a place where you can create web pages and they gave you the AdSense, which was big for me because I was under 18 at the time. So Google, uh, they bar you if you're under 18 from having a Google AdSense account. So uh, I, I know that sounds harsh, but like I, I've tried to get an AdSense account. That's just what it was. Uh, so Squidoo gave me that opportunity, which I was very grateful for. They also uh, allowed you to promote things that's an Amazon or eBay affiliate using their uh, coupons. And they had like a way to split it up. So like you were getting your fair share. Uh, so that's when I first started to make m uh, money where it's like, wow, I can actually like do this whole thing full time. And then it evolved into books because I've been writing a lot of words for all the content I was putting out. So books was the natural next step. Then it became training courses. And now I'm just looking for new ways. I'm, I'm looking at virtual summits, as I mentioned before. I recently came out with audio books. 
uh, because I feel like that's going to be really booming. Uh, it's booming now, but I feel like it's just going to keep growing. So um, I, it started with that site Squidoo, which now merged with Hub Pages, and uh, it's evolved since then. Really good. I, 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 I need to ask you that, this. <laughs> How did how do you get organized? For instance, you get up and you start working. How you schedule your time? I will always work out my schedule the night before, and I've tried a lot of different things with this. I I mean, time stamping is a good one. So like basically, that means like uh, at 10 a.m. I'm gonna do this. Sometimes lately I've been grouping different activities and say, okay, I have to complete these three activities by a certain time. And I found that the grouping gives me a little more choice while at the same time, not so much choice where I get paralyzed and don't know what to do. So <laughs> uh, I would say like, uh, you know how people beam their days. I would um, theme parts of your day. So you're focusing on uh, different core things throughout the day. So Uh, that's where you can say I'm going to get X, Y, and Z done in an hour uh, instead of saying I'm going to get X done from this time to the, uh, from 8 a.m. to 820, Y from 820 to 840, Z from uh, 840 to 9. I mean, like I would recommend testing both of them to see what works for you. Lately, it's been the uh, uh, micro theming uh, within each day. Oh, it seems it sounds good, <laughs> really good. So. There's a, a thing that we used to say in, in Portugal, it's better do it doing than perfect. Or it's kind of, are you a perfectionist? Not at all. I mean, I, I've launched things that like have been filled up with typos and then I have to like edit them while it's already launched. I've done a lot of things that like, uh, if you are there in that moment when I'm doing the editing, you're like, wow, this is nowhere near perfect. Like, I mean, it looks good. Like uh, when it when you see it a few days later, like one of my summit pages, like it looks good on the day the summit comes out. But like, get yeah, like maybe a week before, like things aren't working like a hundred percent. So like, it's a little bit of like in some cases, like a sprint to the finish line. I've definitely been getting better at that. But I don't really intend on launching things that are perfect because, uh, like, from one of my summits, I'm doing the Wealthy Author Summit, November seventh to the fifteenth. Uh, that is a summit where if you give me like one more year to set it up, I could do so many more different things with it, especially like new ideas that I thought of that um, I will definitely be applying to my future virtual summits. Uh, but if you give me that extra year, then maybe I ask for another year. Maybe I ask for a year after that. And I mean, it gets to the point where you have this big idea. You could have easily pulled it off uh, right then and there. Uh, but you held off on it and now you don't really know. The only way you really learn is by doing like, I'm just going on the virtual summit because I'm in that topic, but um, like my next virtual summit is going to be better than the wealthy author summit. That's just how things happen. So you only really get better and close, but not quite at the level of perfect by continuing to implement and also shipping things out, not just, having that book that you finished writing but never pulled the trigger, never published the book or did any of the marketing or any of that kind of stuff. And that's one of the things about content marketing and it's another thing uh, people don't start because I'm not perfect. I won't uh, ship it because it's not perfect. I won't publish because it's not perfect. But if you don't publish, you don't have the feedback. It's one of the things important. It's uh, the feedback from your audience, they could say anything or something to you if they see something. Because if you are waiting to be perfect, they won't see anything. So they won't give you feedback. Don't you think? Yeah, I mean, like, and it's really great you mentioned the feedback because uh, you could create this training course again, like perfection. Like it's not that extreme at all to say that it takes you five years to create this four hour training course because of perfection. And uh, the thing is, if you create that training course, let's say it's like a drip campaign, week one, you release videos, week two, you release videos. Let's say people, if they go through week one, say, I want videos on this, that feedback as Marco mentioned. And well, you already have the course created. You can't adapt on the fly to give your audience more of what they want. So 
I mean, this pursuit of perfection really ends up in a much worse product. And I mean, if it takes you like two or three years or whatever to write a book or create a training course, you probably forgot what most of it was or the order of like chapters or topics or things like that. So you don't even remember what it is in its entirety. I used to say this about uh, products. You think they are doing a product, building a product on a, a laboratory in, in, in a mountain? <laughs> They're 10 years doing research, development, and so on. And when they ship it to the market, there's no one with that need. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine a book being written now about like Facebook ads. Like if you wait three years to publish it, like your book's already outdated. Yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> and if you're talking about digital marketing and mostly about tools, forget it because Facebook is changing every time. Uh, Google, Instagram, and so on. Look at all the, the f new features. Instagram put it out maybe one and a half year. Yeah, so much. And just just to make this a little more dramatic, what about a book about Vine? Yeah, for instance. <laughs> and Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. So, for instance, can you tell about some mistakes you, you, you made, some difficulties you had when you started? Or, or today, for instance, I guess you may have some difficulties today also and some mistakes you, you made as as all of, of us. Yeah, I definitely have to get better at answering this question because like, I know I've made a lot of them, but they don't come to mind right away. So like, I don't want to sound like this guy who's like never made a single mistake. Um, but I mean, like they do happen. I think I just tend to learn from the mistake and not really dwell on it too much. I mean, I, I'm, I'm really trying to think of a mistake, but like, it, it's like, there's a laundry list like somewhere in the back of my mind, but for some reason I'm not able to uh, bring it out. I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, like, I'm, I'm, if I were to come up with anything, it would just be like uh, not utilizing my time properly in all cases, because I feel like uh, you want to have a uh, strict approach with how you use your time. You want to be really strict with, uh, okay, this is a time that I, I know I need to commit X amount of hours to work, but you also, you got to be uh, true to your relationships. So um, I would say sometimes the work like gets so much that sometimes uh, the relationships aren't as strong because you're in a different state. So I would say I try not to overwhelm myself as much. So um, I'm able to uh, have healthy relationships because uh, like one week before launch, I'm a very different person from one week <laughs> post launch. So I guess that's that's something I was able to think of. But there's definitely a lot more that for some reason there is not coming out from the back of my mind. I don't know why. So so you you rather think about challenges and not problems. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, I don't really think about that kind of stuff. Great, great. Can you tell us about some tools you 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 can't can't live without them for instance to podcasting to email marketing and so on some advices mm. <laughs> the most important thing you could do in marketing is to just get to know people so like this interview right now uh i'm in front of a new audience uh you're getting a deeper relationship with me uh so any way you can get to know more people and that's like again the podcast like i mentioned that 250 episodes that's me having to interview 250 people for like 30 to 45 minutes at a time. So a lot of deep relationships are getting built. And I feel like if you have a lot of these relationships where you know hundreds or thousands of people who um, like if you ask them uh, for a favor and they will do that favor and then they ask you and, you know, law of reciprocity, you come through for them. Um, it's really helpful to know a lot of people you get to learn a lot quicker, you get to move your products quicker because it's like joint ventures and things like that. So I would just say the biggest thing you can do is build relationships in marketing. Oh, great. You you saved my life, my, my day. <laughs> because I'm here, because I believe in, in this kind of, of, of thing. For instance, I, you have 
250. Uh, that's my 15th episode. Uh, you are my, I guess I may have almost 100 invited people because some of my shows, I have 10 people <laughs> coming and wow. going. You are my second uh, American. The first one, you may know it, Jeffrey Eisenberg from Bayer Legend. I believe so. Yeah, you may. He used to, he, he writes a lot also with his brother, Brian Eisenberg. For they, you, you may, you search on Amazon and you will find them. And I truly believe everything you said, it's perfect. And I have one plus because I learn languages. <laughs> For instance, uh, what, what you said, my English is not perfect. I, I You I sound really that. good. Well, but it's a nice way to, to, to improve. It's to talking. Talking? Yeah. It's a, it's, it's, it, I, I don't think, because I, I also have some books here. You may, you may know some of them. No, I, yours Your is haters. I just yeah I, I can show you yours don't don't wait wait <laughs> <laughs> I have here my Kindle Olá boa noite Ana Patrícia Let me show you for you to see I'm not I'm not bullshitting Oops Look, look. Aha. There it is. <laughs> Let me see another one. Well, because it's a, a really nice thing. Can by the way, can you can you tell what kinds of content you've been publishing and the advantages you find in one and another and your favorite one? Wow, good question. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've probably published like all the kinds of content under the sun, blog posts, uh, videos, podcasts. I'd say I've easily written over 2,000 blog posts, probably over 2,000 videos if you include training courses. Podcasts, obviously, I'm not there yet, but I'd say I've interviewed close to like 450 people. I, I bring all this up just to like show you the volume. Like I've created a lot of content. So like, I mean, it's like, different um like different experiences i started with blogging then video and then podcasting i would say out of all of them uh writing the content is the hardest one uh because you naturally speak um quicker than you type so you're actually able to provide more value in a shorter time when you speak i mean like books i love to write them out i really love writing books but i mean i'm getting to the point where i'd rather do podcast episodes and YouTube videos and write blog posts, but I'm still going to write blog posts for my community because I know they like that. Uh, but with, I mean, if we were to play a quick little game right now, like starting now, you were supposed to type everything that I say and you can't ask me to repeat or go back to a replay. It's going to be very hard for you to type everything that I actually say right now versus um, if you were just typing it out, I don't know what sentence that I said that you would be on right now, but that's just the idea where, if you talk it, you're able to provide value at a quicker pace. So uh, that's uh, my thoughts on that. I really enjoy creating content in general, but the talking element is just you provide the value quicker and more value also. And for instance, you, it's the more the less intrusive way to communicate the, the audio because you can go on a bus, on a trip, on a on plane, and for instance, if you want to see watch video. It's it's more difficult, don't you think? Even though I really like video, it's my yeah. favorite one because it's really easy and it's the, the more personal, I think, because yeah, you, you can you, you hear and, and and you see the the person and live video for me is more challenging because it's like doing I don't know how There's to no say. Duo. Yeah, of course <laughs> you can. So, Okay, let's <laughs> cut. <laughs> and for instance, if it comes a, a, a tricky question from the audience, mm. it's a nice way you to to build authority, which is a, 
one of the things I guess uh, the better way to 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 build it it's uh, by creating content. Tell me, did you did you have that intention when you started? Did you realize that could be one of the the things that content marketing could provide you, or you just just went by the go and then you realize it? Yeah, I, I just went by the go. I, I um I realized it over time. I mean, like um, I I was very uh, afraid of video when before I started to do video. So I mean, like I feel like people think that these people on the top have never had any of these kinds of fears. But I feel like a lot of them did have that fear in the beginning, whether it's a video or not knowing how to conduct an interview. And you get better with practice over time. So I would say I never really thought consciously about uh, creating content in all these different places or what content can do for me. It's something that I definitely learned along the way while writing a lot of blog posts initially because that's what I felt most comfortable with at the time. Yeah, that, that's one of the questions that sometimes is good, some, some ignorance about things. Mm. Because sometimes overthinking, over knowing could be a, a, a kind of take take you down to well you 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 see Gary Vaynerchuk and all that that guys who are there speaking like they were born on <laughs> speaking <laughs> on video and then you oh I can't do that I won't do that oh what can I do and so on and it's it's not the point. For instance, I, I I use some from time to time. I I I like to publish again my first video. I the, the one, recorded one, which is awful. I'm I, I'm with my hands here, a light kind of light. I I used to I I seem like a ghost or something, and but it was my beginning, and after that I was improving, and that's the point. And my first live video also awful, my God. <laughs> but I started, I, and for instance, I, I don't know, maybe this, I, I will do the, the, this question to you. You'd, people don't used to go talk to you. Well, maybe you should do this, the, the things like this or like that. People who are doing anything, they don't do anything, but they like to give you advices. What? How do you answer them? <laughs> um, so when people give me advice? Well, but that kind of advice is because you have your, your own way to do things, right? Yes. You like to do it your way. And when you do a lot of things the same way and you see it works because you see, I, I believe that you like to measure everything and see how it works and what doesn't work and so on. Okay and you create your own way. But for instance, I come to you, oh, Mark, I think you should do with another kind of music and so on and longer or, sm or smaller. And what do you say to me? <laughs> All right. um, it, first, it, it depends on the suggestion being given. There are some that I just cannot uh, do based on where I am, based on because we have different priorities, different uh, ideals and different like uh, some people may see that five minute podcast shows are the daily way. Other people may see that a two hour interview is the way. So like we obviously have different opinions, but if there's something that, uh, okay, I, like I, I hear this good piece of advice that uh, I feel like it might work for me. I try it for a little bit. Uh, I give it a week long test. If it works for me, if it helps me achieve my objective, I stick with it. If it doesn't, I go back to the original way and I'm careful to uh, make only a few small changes. If you make too many changes, you can wreak havoc to your whole routine. And at the same time, if you only make one change, uh, what's going to happen there is maybe it could be harder to reestablish what you left behind. So uh, if I were, let's say I mentioned the micro uh, theming that I do, if I were to um eliminate that and replace it with uh i don't know like uh flipping a coin to determine what i do it may take me a while to get back to uh that micro theming that i currently have so you want to think about not just what advice is being given but what you have to sacrifice in order to implement on that advice 
Well, I, I, I used to say one thing. First, try this advice you're giving me and then let me know which results you got. That's good too. <laughs> because most of the people, for instance, they give me advices about my live videos. They don't do anything. So mm. why are you advising me if you don't know for <laughs> what to do? The for person instance, giving you marriage advice who's been divorced three times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. <laughs> and when when you start uh well you are you are in a different country than i am <laughs> i guess you know about it and people when you start uh, talking about when you start to consulting them i guess you do this and training them about content marketing yes yes <laughs> okay great they don't say, oh, I won't be wasting my money on that. I won't be wasting my time on that. I want to sell and that's all. Uh, yeah, that's around, yeah, that's around what people think. I, I guess, well, I, I thought it was, was hello, Fabio, boa noite. <laughs> uh, it's saying hello. Well, it's in, in, in English. It's <laughs> you, may, you may say hello. It was a student of mine, but because here in Portugal we have the same problem. For instance, uh, people with business they don't care about doing creating relationship and so on authority also, and they just think about selling, 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 selling. It's a problem. Yeah, they think about uh, that end. Yeah, I get so. I'm not. I'm not so so sad because. In the United States, it's the same. So how do you sell the idea? Or, or if you want to sell, for instance, maybe some, you, I guess you, you have some inbound clients, customers, right? So you don't have to sell content. I, um, um, part of it is based on, uh, again, the relationships I've built. So when I announce that there's like a new training course or something like that, people come instead of me having to reach out and ask them to buy like uh like i'll have a conversation like i'll start a conversation sometimes so like do you want to be on my summit or do you want to do this like call with me for a roundup episode that i'm doing uh but uh it's never hey i have this training course i just launched it it'll be a great fit for you for xyz uh you should buy it. like on LinkedIn, I feel like you can see this a lot because LinkedIn is a really great platform, but if you connect with a lot of people and the more you connect with, the more you'll see this where it's like the first point of contact is, hey, we have a service. Uh, <laughs> we help you grow your SEO. Uh, there are a few critical errors on your website and we know how to fix them for $10,000 a month. Would you be interested? I mean, that's how relationships are sadly started in some cases. So. I would say, again, it comes down to uh, building healthy relationships, and then that's how you get the sales. I feel like there's a lot of good karma. Uh, if you put a lot into a relationship, even if someone like can't necessarily uh, pay you, uh, I feel like you do get a client from that eventually. There's like no like stats to tell you that or anything like that, but I feel like good karma is a real thing. And, and some of your clients, I guess, they don't they get like uh, addicted to to content and to talking to her customers and telling how to do it or and so, that kind of things um I, I would say that they create content to uh reach a certain segment and they uh do give advice on a certain area or they entertain because content uh, can either empower or entertain and not necessarily one is better than the other. I typically go towards the empowerment side, but there are some people who need that sense of entertainment uh, because that is what they want in life. In part, they want to have that entertainment, that break uh, after a long day. So uh, it just depends on the person, which one's better, but either way, your content has to be one of those two things or even a combination of the two. And some, some, some of them don't tell you, oh, well, Mark, when I started, I, I was not sure about the power of content marketing. I was a little bit, oh, okay, let me see how it, it works. And at the end, or not at the end, I'm, <laughs> you know what I mean? They say, oh, well, it was a, a nice 
a nice movement. Um, I would say that most of the people who um, I know and work with, they see content marketing as a potential, like uh, like people they see my book, they see my summit. Uh, so like they know I'm like big into content marketing. So I feel like I like the people who I attract, they know that content marketing works. They just need to know like, what exactly do I have to do? Because with content marketing, there's just so many moving parts. Which one do I focus on first if I can't delegate anything right now? Mm -hmm. That's great. So just, just let me know, how do you think that, where do you will be in five years? Next moves you are planning to make next five years. Do you have any idea? <laughs> I would say a really uh, incredible virtual summit. Um, I would say more best-selling books. Uh, those are some that come quickly to mind. I would say uh, interviewing a lot of really awesome people for Breakthrough Success. I've been able to interview so many awesome people already, but really uh, pushing that even more. Uh, one thing that I am not doing as much now, uh, this is solely because of my schedule, uh, because I am a student and um uh, I do see myself going on a public speaking tour uh, upon graduation. Uh, that is because I really do love to speak and I've spoken on some stages, but uh, if you take a whole month of school off, that doesn't <laughs> help you too much. So um, that's what I'm looking at public speaking, a whole tour on that, a TEDx stage, uh, and uh, I, someday. Uh, so those are some of the things that I'm looking at in the next five years. Well, I, I when you finish, what are you studying? Business? I'm a finance major. Oh, finance. <laughs> I, I'm not really into finance. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we can can say here, when you finish this the, the, the course, one day I will invite you to come here in Portugal to, to speak. Wow, thank you. Okay, <laughs> let me see the budget and uh, maybe in 2020 and something because I'm I'm willing to, to make some kind of Congress here and Ibero-American, I say it's like, it's the way, the right way to say it, Ibero-American, maybe not, but it's okay. I guess you realize what it is. It's about Spanish, Portugal and all the American countries. And maybe we can make something here in Portugal to put together people talking about marketing and content marketing and that kind of and finances. Mm -hmm. <laughs> By the way, do you read it, the book uh, "Poor Dad, Rich Dad"? Um, I, I've heard like uh, snippets of that book. I know it's a really good book. Um, I know Kiyosaki wrote it. I have not read it from cover to cover though, but I feel like I have read most of it or um, heard because I, it's such a common book where you hear a lot of the key points about cash flow from um, a lot of people. Great. Well, to, to finish our talk, <laughs> can you uh, give us some advices about things, uh, nice things to, to do to learn? some books some for instance TED talks you like it to inspire us and something mm -hmm. um i would say uh from the learning side uh, i like to read blog posts because it's so easy to skim them when you're on your commute you can listen to podcast episodes uh, i feel like one of the things that we should think about is i, I really believe we can accomplish the things that we set out to accomplish it's just that how seriously are we taking them and uh some person's version of like i can't be doing this right now like for example uh your lunch hour at work um i was actually i recently had a guest on breakthrough success the episode's not published yet but um he made time during his lunch hour to be on my show so some people would say oh that's my lunch hour i can't uh give that up uh but you could just like nibble on food like while talking while doing an interview and i mean I, we're on lunch so like never eat alone that's another big one because you could be building relationships or strengthening existing ones strengthening existing relationships that is something that not enough people do i feel like we're so focused on outreach we don't think about inreach uh so i would think about 
Uh, what exactly is it do I want to do and how much am I really going to commit in finding time that I'm not using productively to put more into this thing that um, I should really be committing to. And relationships are important, obviously, but you can weed out a lot of the people who aren't providing you with any value because you are the average of the five people who you spend the most of your time with. <laughs> yeah, right. And some some book you should you want to talk you well not one of yours <laughs> right, not one of mine. <laughs> um i mean there's a lot of books the 10x rule by uh grant cardone that's a really big one anything by seth godin seth godin is my favorite author and tromping her out there i've done a lot of interviews i've yes linchpin there we go um, have, have you have you talked with seth yes i have he's amazing you well, I have to ask you to put him in contact with me. <laughs> I did, well, I really love this guy. Yeah, he, well, he's incredible. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> what yeah, kind I of mean, love? I, again, like I've been on a lot of these different things. A lot of people ask me that question. Seth Godin has been the consistent answer for me. Uh, he did start Squidoo. He, um, I got to see him speak at one of his events. So. Uh, he was very instrumental for me uh, getting this desire and getting to where I am now. So that's why I always mention Seth Godin. Now, I like one thing. It's he's very deep. He is. It's when, you don't yeah. hear about that kind. Of, like it's not like uh, like you go find like ten ways to get more Twitter followers on a lot of places. But he's going really deep into stuff that I feel like not a lot of people are talking about or even know about. Yeah, and his consistency is also an amazing thing because each day he publishes anything yeah, or right. something. In well, it's well, it's amazing guy. I yeah. guess I have for maybe ten books from him. Wow. Well, wow. I, I need I, I need to to keep you <laughs> around so you can <laughs> put me in contact with him. <laughs> well, Mark, maybe if you want to give some advices for those who are listening or seeing us, watching us to get started to doing things? Um, obviously just do it. That's the mindset you need to have regarding the actual advice that you can take action on. Um, I would say picking a time of day to actually do what you're setting out to do, whether it's morning, afternoon, or evening, getting really deeper uh, into that. And one of the things you can do if you feel like you don't have enough time, wake up at 5 a.m., wake up uh, uh, really early in the morning so that you have time to do that. Because a lot of people, they sleep in or they sleep more than they have to. And that is like, that's golden opportunity that you have with the uh, waking up at 5 a.m. You start the day by being productive. And that makes such a big difference on how the rest of your day will go. Great. And another thing I guess you may agree with me is connect. Yes, that's big. I, I Today I published a, a post on, on, on Instagram when I, when I say that my favorite tool to get an, 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 uh, an yes is to ask. Because most of the time, and I guess it's one, I, I don't, maybe in America it's different, but here in Portugal, we are afraid to ask anything because, oh, I will get to no. know. And what if you get a yes? Mm. And I guess, for instance, I may get a, a, a no from you when I ask you to come here. But I get a yes because yeah. mostly yeah. because I asked. <laughs> yeah, you get a yes without asking. Yeah. So connect and ask. <laughs> Maybe it's my, my two advices also to my audience so mark thank you a lot for being here it was a pleasure for have you here for the first time i guess we may repeat if you want so <laughs> okay it was a pleasure okay great do i i wish you a nice halloween <laughs> do you have your custom ready <laughs> <laughs> And well, for instance, oh, look, I, I'm do I'm working on a client now. I'm consulting them, and they are preparing a, a kind of movie for tomorrow, inspired on Halloween. Wow! Yeah, it will be amazing. It the 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 I don't know if you saw the movie. I know what you did last summer. 
I didn't see that. I, I don't watch that many movies, though. Yeah, it's an horror movie, but well, it's about Halloween, of course. <laughs> it should be, and it's a, a fishing uh, store, so it will be. They they are doing a, a really nice work. I, I didn't see the 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 final work because they were producing, but I I see some things really nice. Well, I will say goodbye to the people if you <laughs> say. Muito obrigado pelo tempo que estiveram aí a ver. Espero que tenham gostado tanto como eu. Efetivamente é bom trazer, por um lado, a perspectiva de alguém que é tão jovem, mas já criou tantas coisas. Alguém que está num país completamente diferente da maioria de todos nós e que esteve aqui disposto a partilhar connosco os seus conhecimentos. Aquilo, tudo aquilo que, que, que já, em tão pouco tempo, já experienciou. Há aqui algumas uh, lições que eu acho que devemos tirar desta conversa com o Marco. Uma é fazer, é muito importante fazer, porque é a melhor maneira de aprender é fazer, fazer, fazer. Outra questão que é muito importante é ligarmos outras pessoas. O Marco também tem um, uh, um, um podcast em que já tem 250 e tal episódios preparados, não estão todos publicados, mas já tem 250 e tal episódios de podcast feitos que lhe proporcionaram, assim como eu faço estes meus diretos, que lhe proporcionaram conhecer muita gente, partilhar ideias, partilhar conhecimento, e isto é riquíssimo. E outra coisa que o Marco também acredita, tal como eu, é na questão de pedir. Muitas vezes nós uh, temos medo de pedir às pessoas porque vamos ter um não, ou que ai, não vai gostar, mas acreditem, e eu falo por mim também, porque com este direto já convidei seguramente mais de 100 pessoas, das 50, dos 54 episódios que fiz em que vários deles tive mais que um convidado e também dos próximos que ainda vão de vir e por isso acreditem nestas três coisas fazer, ligar e pedir são três coisas fundamentais para se ter sucesso ok? desejo-vos uma boa noite amanhã é véspera de feriado por isso a partida não teremos diretos esta semana a partida não teremos mais mas eventualmente pode ser que eu apareça por aí ok espero que tenham gostado desejo-vos uma excelente noite um bom resto de semana e até breve can you wanna say boa noite Mark em português boa noite can you boa What? noite ah great <laughs> amazing <laughs>